Lisa Randall, la primera mujer física teórica del Instituto Tecnológico de Massachusetts y de la Universidad de Harvard, donde continúa trabajando, ha pronunciado recientemente una conferencia en la Universidad Autónoma de Madrid. Esta experta mundial en física de partículas es famosa por idear, junto a su compañero Ramán Sandram, un modelo que propone que el universo puede tener más dimensiones que las conocidas hasta ahora. We don't actually know if they exist. I'd say there's three reasons we think about it. One is string theory, which is potentially a consistent theory of quantum mechanics and gravity. Only makes sense if there are other dimensions. But even if string theory weren't right, there's just the fact that we don't know why three dimensions of space exist. Um, Einstein's theory of gravity makes sense with other numbers of dimensions. But the last reason is that maybe In the end of the day, we'll understand our world better because we include these extra dimensions and maybe that is some um, motivation to think about it. Perhaps they really exist and explain phenomena in our world. And furthermore, maybe we can even test them. By understanding these phenomena, we can see it, it leads us towards experimental tests. What we're trying to do right now is address what's called the hierarchy problem of particle physics, which is to understand the mass energy scale at which particles get their mass. So you first have to understand the notion that particles could not have mass unless there's something called the Higgs mechanism around. If you just looked at what the force is constrained, it would be very hard for particles to have masses unless something else is going on. And that something else is going on at this particular energy scale known as the weak energy scale. So that's the first thing to understand, that there is an energy associated with particles getting their mass. The second thing to understand is that there's a, an issue about that energy scale. Because if you just put together what we know from quantum mechanics and relativity, that energy scale seems very strange. In fact, it seems that it's 16 orders of magnitude, less than what you would expect based on these principles. So that is the problem that we're trying to address. It's a very concrete problem in the sense that If there is a solution, it should have evidence at experiments today at what's called the Large Hadron Collider, the LHC. So we're not just looking at abstract problems. String theory on the whole looks at very abstract problems about very, very high energy scales, well beyond what experiments can see, about a quantum theory of gravity. What I and my collaborators are trying to do is understand the weak energy scale, a much lower energy scale. Ideas from string theory might enter into the solution, such as this model of warp geometry that I worked on with Raman Sundram, but it's not necessarily testing string theory. The ingredient that was motivated by string theory that we do use, there's two ingredients. One is the idea there could be an extra dimension of space beyond what we see, beyond the three we know about, left, right, forward, backward, up, down. There could be hidden dimensions that we just don't experience or see. That's the first thing. And string theory tells us that there should be such dimensions. But really, even without string theory, it's, it's certainly a logical possibility. The second thing is that string theory tells us there could exist objects called brains, which are they're lower dimensional objects in a higher dimensional space. So for example, we could live in a world that's a three-dimensional brain It's an English word, B-R-A-N-E, that comes from membrane. And so the idea is that we could have these brains in a higher dimensional world. We live there, but gravity can change so much in an extra dimension that it naturally explains this weak scale. Because even though there are much higher energy scales, where we live, particles are naturally very light. Another way of thinking about it, which is maybe a little more intuitive, and I realize this is all very abstract, is that gravity is in some sense strong somewhere else and very weak where we are. So gravity would naturally be a weak force, and it would naturally explain this great discrepancy of scales that we see. Well, we don't actually name them. I mean, we just call it a fourth dimension of space, a fifth dimension of space-time. There's no real need to name it because it wouldn't tell us anything beyond what we already know by what I just told you. I mean, then the question is, what is the geometry of those dimensions? What exists in those dimensions? So we want to understand the properties, the geometry, what's there. But naming it doesn't necessarily help us very much yet. If we find it, maybe we'll give it a name. If 
the theory is correct, the evidence would be in the form of particles called kaluza klein particles. It's named after a physicist and mathematician who first thought about extra dimensions in physics at the early 20th century. What these particles are, are essentially particles like the ones we know, but they travel in the extra dimension. They have momentum in the extra dimension. Since we don't see an extra dimension, we see them as heavy particles in our world. So the evidence would be particles like the ones we know about, so whose properties we understand, the interactions we understand, but have much heavier masses. And those masses we can estimate if it's really associated with the, the solution to this particle for this problem we mentioned earlier. So the Large Hadron Collider might well find evidence. Uh, we hope so, but honestly, we can't count on it. Um, it certainly is possible that there are particles that are hard to find at the LHC, but it's also possible that it will cover a substantial part of the, of the possible parameter range. So we might find it there. I can't guarantee that we would find it there.